One way to simulate the butterfly effect is to set up a double pendulum, and if you tweak it like I've done to this one, you can make it into a musical instrument. Here's what that sounds like. If you haven't heard of the butterfly effect, uh, here's the main idea. Imagine a butterfly which flaps its wings and disturbs the air in just the right way, such that it starts a chain reaction of air movement that eventually results in a tornado thousands of miles away weeks later, like a domino effect. This particular example might sound ridiculous, but I'm sure you can think of scenarios where a very small change in the initial conditions can have drastic changes to the future. Like, what if Putin decided to press his nuke button? Let's not go into an existential spiral, though. There's plenty of time to do that when you're trying to sleep. For now, let's just talk about music. This sensitivity to small changes is what makes a system like the double pendulum chaotic. The double pendulum is a common example of chaos because if you change the initial conditions, even slightly, the path the pendulum takes quickly diverges from all the other possible futures. But the movement of the pendulum is not random. We have equations to predict its exact path. Uh, the system is just so sensitive that it would be pointless to try to predict its behavior in the real world because we couldn't set it up accurately enough. I thought that this chaoticness might make the pendulum just sound like noise, but actually it has a pretty unique character. I think that's because you can kind of control how much the chaos influences your system. The example I showed earlier was very affected by chaos, but I can also change the settings to make it more mild. First, let me explain how it works, and then we can talk about how to adjust the level of chaos to your liking. It's actually pretty simple. We just let our input signal control the position of the top point where the pendulum would attach to whatever is holding it. Like you can imagine this top point is attached to a guitar string or something like that. Then we measure the X coordinate of the bottom point and output that as our signal. And that's it. This pendulum wouldn't be very good for music because uh, sound is very high frequency and if we yanked around our anchor point as fast as a guitar string moves, we wouldn't give the pendulum a chance to do all these cool flips. To get the cool flips while also moving the anchor back and forth like a thousand times per second, the, the main thing we need to do is adjust gravity and the friction within these joints. If we're moving this point as fast as a guitar string, we better have really strong gravity pulling it down so it has a chance to drop. Otherwise, it's just going to be flung around. We also need to provide some friction or else too much energy will build up. Think about it. If there's no friction, and the pendulum is swinging back and forth, uh, it'll never stop. Musically, what that means is an endless ringing, which we don't want. Actually, if I don't add enough friction, my simulation crashes because I end up putting in energy faster than I take it out, and my computer can't handle infinite pendulum speed. So to fix that, I ended up putting in a check to see how fast the pendulum was swinging, and if it goes too fast, I just reset. Actually, when it goes too fast and glitches out like that, it sounds kind of cool, so I ended up putting that on the album. That's one of the nice things about doing this as an artistic venture, because if things aren't exactly right, uh, it just means it sounds a little different. It doesn't mean the spaceship crashes or whatever. It would be a huge pain to tune the parameters and then export the sound and then tune it again and then export it again. So I made it into an audio plugin and now I can tune it while listening to it. Most of the time I just keep the mass of both of the balls at one kilogram and I keep the rod lengths at one meter. Actually that's a pretty scary contraption if you think about it, uh, especially since it's being whipped back and forth like a thousand times per second. I guess that wouldn't really matter though because for this to work properly, I had to set the gravity to about a million times Earth's gravity. That is a black hole level of gravity, so I don't think you'd be worrying about the pendulum hitting you. Anyway, if I get the settings just right, I can make the pendulum dance as my guitar signal moves the anchor point back and forth. Imagine a double pendulum that's six feet tall with two pound metal balls being whipped around at a thousand miles per hour at the event horizon of a black hole.
I mean, that scenario is so ridiculous. Sound is probably a meaningless concept, but it's a cool image. Anyway, I can reduce the friction and increase the gravity a bit, and that will give me something that likes to ring. It's not flipping around as much because gravity is pulling it down harder, and since friction is so low, it can swing back and forth for a really long time. Now I can treat it more like an oscillator that's excited by the input rather than an effect on a pre-existing signal. I'll just tap my microphone, and that can start up the oscillation. And if I want to change the pitch, I can just adjust the length of the rods. It's acting kind of like a normal pendulum in this situation, but the extra pendulum attached to the end still contributes by adding its own frequencies in there. It's just more subtle. And that's pretty much it. So I'll end the video with a part from my new album, which uses a whole bunch of double pendulums. Uh, kind of like if you had them lined up, again, at the event horizon of a black hole, and imagine you can hit the top of them with a wooden mallet. Very sci-fi.